Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. Hey guys, we are here today in the uh, Tampa area on an unattended death. Uh, speaking to myself and Shelby's in the back there. Uh, this individual unfortunately passed away from unknown causes and uh, was not found for uh, approximately six to eight weeks. And then it's been an additional three to four weeks since we were able to kind of get in here. It's pretty intense in there. Uh, yeah, you can actually see that it's continued to grow as it was unintended. So um, it looks like we're definitely taking the, the entire flooring for, the, for the, the bathroom. And we believe that it is soaked into the walls. So we're gonna have to go into the walls as well. Yeah, and it, it, it looks like it's just been traveling through the grout lines. So honestly, at the end of the day, I think this bathroom will be completely gutted. Yeah. It's, Gonna have it's intense. Everything. Uh, we've got flies everywhere, not only in there, but in all parts of the home. So, uh, yeah, actually, one of the other things on all, all the walls that are um, leading in from the bathroom out, there's also larvae on the walls. So, they're nesting, they've made this their home. Um, so, and you, as she said, you can see these in opposite side of the house, you can see the flies and the larvae as well. Yeah, it's a pretty intense situation, so we'll probably be here a, a couple days uh, getting this rectified and getting the odor situation under control, uh, but uh, this is a big one. Absolutely. Then we're going to have to go in there, pick up all the, the uh, towels and the, the stools and stuff and take them out of it, bio, bio bag it, and then our job is to smash and break all the tile so we can pull it up. Every piece or where you see it hits the wall, just like water, it's gonna it's gonna be soaked up into the wall. So we're also gonna have to take the wall, the cabinet stuff. We're gonna have to check to see if it's in there. We actually have a chemical called indicator. When we spray it, it thumbs up and tells us where there's bio waste. So anything that we indicate, if we can't clean it after three attempts, it's gone. Okay. Stuff like this that has a veneer surface on it, typically we can clean it. But these grout lines like this is very porous and it goes into the into it. And then once it gets underneath this, it just runs like crazy. Yeah, this is a hot mess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely the walls in the closet yeah. are gonna go. These walls here, the bifold door. Uh, I would just honestly take the tile up at the threshold and keep going all the way in. Because yeah. it, it just been sitting so long, it went through the grout line and... Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, it's a mess, mess, mess. When we walked in, in here, we knew that the main um, spot where the under, unattended body was found was in the master bathroom. But our concern was as the first responders come and find the body, they track blood and, and other bio throughout the house. So what we have to do is indicate outside the main area to make sure that we are cleaning and decontaminating those areas as well. And so what we do is this doorway here is the main entrance that we're using in and out of the house. So we're using that to make sure that from this point on that we're not continuously cross-contaminating the rest of the house. So we claim to, to our master bathroom. And then once we get into our master bathroom, we um, indicate outside the realm of noticeable uh, bio matter and blood. And then what we're gonna do is, as we're treating it with our chemical, what we call part A, and what that is going to do is rehydrate the biomatter. And once it rehydrates the biomatter, we start to wipe and clean it up because we know we're gonna have to pull up the tile. But we don't wanna be slinging that biomatter around as we're pulling up that tile. So we have to do a surface clean first before we go and start looking at the subfloor and removing the tile and then getting into the walls as well.
So with a HEPA bag and a shot bag, they have similar functionality, but a HEPA bag is self-contained, where a shot bag, if you've ever used it before, it has an exhaust port so that it can keep that suction power and everything. When you're using a HEPA bag, the HEPA filter, it takes in the particulates and, and all the, the biomatter and it keeps it all within the vacuum so that nothing gets back out into the air. Where if you try to use a shop bag to do the exact same thing, it will push that particulate air back into, the, into your surrounding area. There's still a turd in there. What? <laughs> so the good thing about this house is the AC's on. I cranked it down real low. So that it's a little bit more suitable working conditions. Where, as you see, we're in full Tyvek suits, wearing a respirator. Um, but even with the AC currently set at 70, it is still hot when you're working in there and just trying to scrub the floors, get everything up, use the HEPA vacuum. As you see, we also have the air scrubbers here. This is just to help pull all the particulate out of the, the air and try to reduce some of the smell. Um, hopefully, after we do the majority of it today, uh, with the air scrubbers running, it'll help reduce the smell a lot. Um, so that we can go to a N95 mask tomorrow, which is a lot less uh, bearing on our face and our breathing capabilities. Um, but until we get the, all the bio removed, we're not gonna we're not switching to the N95. Once we get all that removed, what we want to do is we want to place an ozone machine. That's one of the last steps. But what it does is it completely eliminates the entire odor and smell inside the house, and then we use odor blocks, which is uh, like a car pine tree on steroids. And what it does is it gives you a very, whatever the scent is, ours are tropical, it gives you this tropical smell that will circulate through the house, keep the AC circulating and, and try to make sure that the house goes back to, to a normal smell as quick as possible. As you can see, we pulled up a lot of the tile, and that's what's in, in this bin here. Um, we started to cut into the drywall um, because the, the biomatter started to seep up the wall. Um, we're also seeing that the because it was an unintended death, and it sat here for uh, even after the body was discovered. So we went unintended for about two and a half weeks, uh, uh, may, actually three and a half weeks, I think. Um, and then it sat here for an additional six to eight weeks before the uh, before the family decided what they or how they could move forward. Um, so the walls were sucked up all the the biomatter, kind of like a sponge. Um, so cleaning all that stuff up right now. Um, for the net, what we have to look at next is into the wash basin here or the sinks. We're gonna have to cut the kick plate off, see if it went beyond the kick plate at all. We're gonna continue to clean the, the drywall. It looks like we're gonna have to go into the, the drywall that's attached to the closet. Hopefully it didn't go too far into the closet and make us uh, expand the job into the closet any, any further than it already has. Um, right now, the only thing that we've had to do in the closet was pick up the, the flies that are nesting. Um, we are seeing, beyond, once we pull the drywall and the baseboards off, we are seeing nests and nests of flies and maggots and uh, their little, their little uh, shell carcasses from where they, they uh, 
transform from a maggot to a fly. Um, still got a whole a whole day ahead of us. Um, we're probably gonna have to break into the shower as well. So uh, stay tuned. Welcome back for day two. So you want to introduce us to day two? How's day two going? So oh. far, it's off to a rough start because we can't get the toilet up. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, the screws are basically completely rusted. There's nothing to, no grooves on them to get anything to stick. It keeps spinning if you do turn it. But we're trying. We got the water shut off already. Once we get that up, we'll basically be getting the rest of the tile over here up. Thankfully, thankfully, nothing went through the grout line. So there might be like a spot here or two, like around the edges of the walls and stuff. Other than that, nothing went through which is a miracle because that never happens. But I'm gonna try to get the rest of it done today. Oh, oh. Yeah! Look at this guy. It's good, but it's going under this board and everything, and I'm sure that soaked it up. I mean, this is a support area, so we should just be able to cut that whole square off on the bottom, right? Okay. For what, the, the wood? The wood, the other side of the drywall. The drywall, yes. The wood, no. Yeah, the scrub bed. And? Yeah. Because, I mean, if it's going under... Sure. That's my concern, because this one should be okay. I'll just scrub around, get what I can off there. Right. And then if anything, we'll just paint some pills there. No problem. On the front. Thankfully, it looks like it's just coming out. I can scrub that, but it doesn't look... <laughs> I'm so nervous, because I don't want to have to take out a supporting part. There, then we'll screw it. 
if that's the case, then all this is gonna have to come out as well. Yep. Yep, sure does. This side is up. This side is up. There it is. What's up? Ah, there it goes. Okay. What are you doing right now, Shelby? Right now, I am using our Kills paint to seal whatever concrete or wood we have that we couldn't get the bio out of. Either it's too deep, but obviously we can't cut this because that is a supporting foundation for the house. So this is what, your second bio now? Uh, yeah, give or take. Yeah? How, how do you feel? How was this one compared to the uh, other? I mean, it's basically the same thing as usual with what comes along with the work. I mean, biohazards is what it is. You just got to have a stomach for blood and all that other good stuff. But other than that, just stay at the office for me. You feel like it's something you can keep doing, not, not oh, yeah. squeamish? I enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. I've been doing this stuff, working restoration for about five years now. So bio is just an extra perk. It helps me to learn something new. We'll see you so. next time, Mario. I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. So Shelby, this is what, your fifth, sixth bio? I think like fourth or fifth. How'd it go? Uh, I want to say fifth. What's that? I want to say it was my fifth one. Uh, it wasn't nearly as bad as what I thought it would be. Um, just from what we were told before we started the job, we thought that we were going to have to take out a lot more. Thankfully we didn't, although I was a little upset to see that it did kind of get into the wood frame of the shower. That was easy to get out after probably about what, an hour's work trying to get the tile and wood up. <laughs> but overall, it's all good. We killed everything. <sighs> now we just gotta fog the house to help get rid of the rest of the remaining of the smell. And we should be good. For watching guys don't forget to like share subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode for more information visit any of our locations